graphics. Graphics is a very interesting characteristic of the Commodore 64. You've seen some of the fine graphics that can be done with games. What I'd like to talk about now is the techniques that are used to make graphics happen. Mostly they're used in programs. You won't need to do that unless you try your hand at programming. But it's interesting to know how some of these things are accomplished. And some of them are easier than you think. Let's talk about the first kind of graphic, and that is you can draw pictures using ordinary characters. Letters of the alphabet, numbers, and all of the special symbols that we find on the front keys there. I'd like to show a simple example of that. Here, if I press a key, I can cause a face to be drawn. That face is two letter O's, a letter V, and an equal sign. And we can draw a border around that face if we use the special graphics which exist inside the Commodore. We're just using the special things that are built in. All these characters are built in, and you can draw some quite fine pictures using the ones that are there. But you can do it a better way if you need more detail if you need things that aren't available in the existing graphics. Easiest way of doing it is this. You can change the existing characters, A, B, C, D, E, E, F, and the special graphics and so on, into a special character set of your own. I've programmed the computer so that now the characters have been changed. Let's go and take a look at them. I changed the letter A. In fact, I've changed this partly to the Greek alphabet. The letter A is now the Greek alpha character. There it is. Okay. The letter B is the Greek beta. And as you might suspect, the letter C has been changed to the character called gamma. And the letter D to a delta. We could have changed out the characters to the entire Greek set or any other set you want. If you want to write in Hebrew or Cyrillic or Arabic, define your own characters. The 64 has the capability right within its software to do all of that. But we can do other things. For example, I defined another letter here into a rather curious character. Doesn't look like anything, looks like a bit of code. Let's take a look at that and say, why would we do that? Well, perhaps you might be able to guess if I show you a different character that I've defined. Now, I've swapped out parts of the alphabet for this one, too, but here's what we have. If I put all of these characters together, this one, and then this one, and then I'll go down to the next line and put down this one and this one. What do we have? A smile face. Fairly large with a bit of detail on it because it's four characters put together. Now, when I finish, and if you see the principles here, I'd like to ask the computer to return to its normal alphabetic characters, and you'll see these things displayed on the screen return to their normal alphabet. And you'll see which keys that I press to make it happen. Here we go. And there are the characters that I was really pressing to make those things happen. So, principle number one, use the built-in characters. If the built-in ones aren't good enough, build your own. Principle number three is a whole different thing. The 64 has a remarkable feature called sprites. Now, a sprite is almost like something that has a life of its own on the screen. It moves around independently and can be controlled independently of everything else. And so it may pass in front of something, and the material it passes in front of will reappear. Let me show you a couple of simple sprites like this. We can see a couple of balloons moving around on the screen. And you can see, in fact, that the yellow balloon is moving behind the alphabetic characters, and the white balloon is moving ahead of them we can make this sort of thing happen. I'll stop these sprites for a moment and show you another feature. I'll simply stop the program. The thing about sprites is that they are so independent on the screen that they seem to have completely a life of their own. It's almost as if somebody pasted them on top of the screen and they have nothing to do. I'll list part of the program that we've been running to do these characters and you can see the sprites simply aren't affected by that. They stay on the screen all by themselves. Let's continue this program. I haven't finished yet. The sprites will continue moving. Okay, and you can see that they move around among the characters and don't really have any problems there. And then we'll go back. And I want to look at one other feature. Now, we've talked about then the regular, gra the regular characters and graphics, building your own, adding sprites, and you can do all of these. 
And then there's finally one more thing. You can use a truly high resolution to manipulate any part of the screen you want. The smallest thing you can draw on the screen is called a pixel, P-I-X-E-L. And a pixel is a very small thing. You can get hundreds of them across the screen and hundreds vertically. So a pixel is a very small dot on the screen. Now, if we can individually turn on and off any pixel and perhaps choose its color to a limited extent, then we can draw some very detailed things. Pixels can be used for, for example, drawing mathematical curves. They can be used for sketching using a light pen or a graphics tablet. And they can give you a great deal of control. Let's take a look at a simple math curve drawn using pixels. You can see that that logarithmic curve that we have on there is outlined by turning on individual dots on the screen. That's pretty good. That's pretty impressive. That's probably the hardest way to do things, although it's not really hard. But the important thing for you to know is you have a lot of options. You have some very rich graphics available on the Commodore 64.